Hello and welcome back to Educator.com and welcome back to Biochemistry. So today we're going to start talking about enzyme kinetics. So kinetics is just a fancy word for rate of a reaction. How fast does this reaction go? Uh, kinetics is sort of the beginning of our understanding of mechanism. Um, with biochemistry, with all of chemistry, our ultimate goal is to understand the mechanism how something goes from one thing to another. In the case of an enzyme, how an enzyme takes a particular substrate and how it converts it to product, uh, each individual little step, every single electron, where it goes, every single atom, every single hydrogen ion that is transferred from here to there. That's our ultimate goal. Because if we understand the mechanism, then we know how to control it. We know how to fiddle with it, how to do whatever we want to it because we understand how it works. Uh, kinetics is sort of the first step of understanding that mechanism. Um, it is the oldest approach to understanding mechanism, and it's still very, very, very important. So let's jump in and see what we can do. Now we are going to deal a lot with, uh, we're going to deal with the quantitative aspects of kinetics, and I am going to go through a, uh, a derivation of the Michaelis-Menten equation. Uh, hopefully it won't be too bad. Ultimately, we're not going to be concerned with the derivation. Your teacher will let you know about the extent to which you need to know the derivation or not the derivation, uh, but we will go through it. It's the final form of the equation and how the enzyme behaves. That's what's important, more of a global understanding. So let's see what we can do. Okay, now as we said, the fundamental approach. So let's see here. So the fundamental approach to studying mechanism is to determine the rate of the reaction. Is to determine the rate of an enzyme catalyzed reaction. Enzyme catalyzed RxN and more importantly and how this rate actually changes how this rate changes with changes in substrate con concentration. Substrate concentration. In other words, if I start with a certain amount of enzyme that will hold constant, and if I add a certain amount of substrate to this enzyme solution, and if I measure how fast these substrate molecules are being turned over uh, into product, that gives me a rate. Uh, it'll be often be expressed in terms of, let's say, millimoles or micromoles per minute, or perhaps in molarity, um, millimolar or micromolar per minute or per second. So a rate is some change in some value per unit time. That's what a rate is, how fast something is happening. Well, if I start with a different initial concentration, does that change the rate? As it turns out, the answer is yes. So substrate concentration, ultimately substrate concentration, controls how fast or how slow an enzyme-catalyzed reaction is going to go. Now, it's never always this simple. Um, with normal chemical reactions, it's not even that simple. You can just imagine how complex it can become in the case of an enzyme-catalyzed reaction where you have maybe more than one substrate, where you have multiple steps uh, uh, in a mechanism, not just one or two, but perhaps seven or eight uh, before the enzyme releases the product. So again, we're going to be making some simplifying assumptions to make it tractable so that we can actually deal with it. But ultimately, it is about how the substrate concentration affects how fast a reaction, an enzyme-catalyzed reaction, can go. Okay, so let's see what we have. Now, since the substrate concentration We'll uh, denote it like that, S with a bracket. So concentration, you remember from chemistry, always has brackets, and those brackets are normally moles per liter. Um, in the case of biochemistry, it'll usually be millimolarity, occasionally micromolarity, because you're talking about pretty small amounts, at least as far as the enzyme is concerned, and often uh, the substrate as well. So since S changes, 
as the reaction proceeds, we simplify matters by measuring initial rates. And you remember, or you should remember at least, I uh, hope you remember, initial rates from general chemistry when you were doing the kinetics portion. Although I do understand that the kinetics portion of general chemistry is generally that portion of chemistry that one would like to forget. That's the one that seems to leave the mind the quickest because it was so very odd compared to the other concepts because it was heavily mathematical. In any case, um, so as you know, you put a substrate in with an enzyme, the substrate concentration actually changes. So <clears throat> as an experimenter, how can one, and since the substrate concentration is changing, how can I actually try different substrate concentrations to get some sort of a relationship between substrate concentration and speed of the reaction? Well, if we measure how fast the reaction is going in the beginning, right when we put the substrate and the enzyme together, let's say within the first 30 seconds or at most the first minute, we never want to let it go past that. Well, during that time frame, because the substrate concentration in general is usually going to be so much more than the enzyme concentration, right? Enzyme will is not used up in a reaction. So the enzyme concentration is very small. One enzyme molecule can handle millions of substrate molecules. Because that's the case, in the, first, in the first part of a reaction, the first 30 seconds, the first minute, maybe the first minute and a half, the substrate concentration doesn't really change all that much, especially since the substrate concentration is so much bigger than the enzyme concentration. So for all practical purposes, the substrate concentration that I start the experiment with, it's going to be held constant. So if I start with 10 millimoles or 20 millimoles or 30 millimoles, even though substrate is being used up, compared to the 20 millimoles, 30 millimoles, 40 millimoles that I start off with, it's going to be completely negligible. So now we can actually do that. Even though substrate concentration changes with an enzyme catalyzed reaction because of the difference, because there's so much substrate, I can pretend that it doesn't really change. So now I can actually run my experiment. I can actually collect some data. So since S changes to the reaction, we simplify matters by measuring initial rate initial rates of reaction. So how fast the reaction is going at the beginning before other complications start to slow the reaction down. Now, as we said, since the concentration of S is so much greater than the concentration of enzyme, um, During the first minute or two, two, the substrate concentration is essentially constant. Constant. Okay, so now what this does is this allows us to choose various initial concentrations, like I said, 10, 20, 40, 80, 160, however, um, allows us to choose various initial concentrations then plot the rate of reaction that we measure. The rate of reaction as a function of these different initial concentrations. As a function of these initial concentrations. In other words, what we're saying is that the rate, I'll call it, I'll call it initial velocity. So we'll use the, the symbolism that's pretty common. Well, actually, you know what? Let me go ahead and just write it as rate first, and then I'll go ahead and use the symbolism. So the rate is going to be some function of s. In other words, you're going to have s on the x-axis. Okay, That's going to be your independent variable, and the rate is going to be your dependent variable. That's going to be your y-axis.
So rate or speed of the reaction will often symbolize with V sub zero, initial velocity, sort of this zero making reference to the fact that we're dealing with an initial rate. So V sub zero is equal to some function of the substrate concentration. Different substrate concentrations, different values, and you end up getting this curve. Well, when we do this, when we actually run the experiment, we get the following. We take some enzyme. We start with a different bunch of su different substrate concentrations. Let's say we run, you know, 10 different initial concentrations. We get 10 data points. We measure the speed at the beginning of the reaction.